Is it worth it to try and become a mathematician in 2022? In this video, we're going to try and help you understand whether this particular occupation is for you. But first, we actually need to draw a distinction between actually being employed as a mathematician and identifying as a mathematician. Majoring in math is actually one of the least regretted college majors out there, math and computer science. A lot of people really enjoy majoring in math, but there's a big difference between being employed as a mathematician and getting a master's degree in math and going and working as a software developer or some other ancillary field. That person might still identify as a mathematician, but they're not being employed as a mathematician. So how can we define what a mathematician is? Mathematicians address the relationships of quantities, magnitudes, and forms through the use of numbers and symbols. Often they're trying to come up with new algorithms and mathematical theorems. This is often to extend mathematical knowledge beyond where it is right now. And mathematicians can also be involved in applying these mathematical theories and techniques to practical problems in business, engineering, and the sciences. Mathematicians definitely need to stay current in the field. They need to read professional journals, attend professional conferences, and often work with other mathematicians. The vast majority of people that major in mathematics, get a master's in mathematics, or get a PhD in mathematics, don't end up actually being employed as a mathematician most of the time. Usually they're a software developer, a data scientist, maybe they become an actuary, a physicist, but often they're not trying to come up with new mathematical theories or extend the knowledge base of mathematics. And it's actually really challenging to get one of these positions as a mathematician. In fact, 50% of employed mathematicians have a doctoral degree, 25% have a master's degree, and only 8% of employed mathematicians have a bachelor's degree. Many mathematician job postings require higher education. So one of my favorite ways of looking at job postings is actually just to use the Google search engine. Type in a an occupation such as mathematician, jobs, and then maybe the location, press the enter key, and then just click inside this little box here, the blue box, and the Google search engine, this actually, this tool actually brings in job postings from so many different sources, random ones like get LinkedIn, get work, job, trabajo.org. So this is a great way to look at different job postings for mathematicians. And here we can actually look at some of the requirements for becoming a mathematician. For this particular role, it's with the Department of Transportation. It doesn't list requirements, but Pretty good pay between 108,000 and 141,000 a year working for the probably the federal government department of transportation but what, what you notice is a lot of these positions are adjunct positions working for a university almost all of these are going to re require e at least a master's degree most often they're going to require a doctoral degree applicant must have a master's degree in mathematics so Actually, you know, you, you can go work for some universities like Kentucky State University as an adjunct with just a master's degree, but to become probably a full-on professor, you're probably going to need a PhD mathematics facility at San Antonio, Texas, in San Antonio, Texas. Let's see what the requirements are, show full description. Once again, this requires a master's degree in mathematics or a master's degree with 18 graduate semester hours from a regionally accredited educational institution. We'll just do one more job posting and then we will move on. This is iGaming Mathematician. So let's take a look at this. Looks like a gaming company. Really interesting. Okay, so this is kind of coding as well. Uh, let's see what the requirements are. It doesn't actually give us an educational requirement. Full description. We'll just do qualifications. Eh, mathematics degree, statistics degree, computer science degree. Postgrad preferred but it doesn't actually say whether it requires a master's or a PhD. So you might be able to get into this particular job with maybe possibly just a bachelor's degree. Mathematicians are generally gonna work for three different kinds of industries. First being colleges and universities. This is gonna be the probably the lowest paid, unfortunately, for mathematicians. We're gonna get into wages a little bit later in the video, but they might be working for as an adjunct or a professor in a university setting. Second one would be federal government. The federal government hires a lot of mathematicians for a, a lot of different government agencies, especially the Department of Defense. And finally, we have high tech. This is probably gonna be the highest paying area for mathematicians working for Google, Amazon, and a lot of these companies, it's not even just about the base salary. Many of their employees are getting crazy stock options, bonuses every year, and have really great benefits. So as you can see so far, this is going to be a challenging occupation to get into because of the barrier to entry. If you need help choosing a career, we have you covered. Our Choose the Right Career program is a seven-step process. We really help you learn about yourself. 
We've tried to figure out your interests, your personality, your values, where you want to live. And we take all those factors and apply it to a single career choice. This is really helpful to break through analysis paralysis when you're trying to research different occupations. There's a link below if you're interested. And for a limited time for 30% off, use the coupon code winter-sale at the checkout. So next we're gonna get into the wages of mathematicians. And this can be so varied. It's so dependent on the industry the mathematician is working in. The average base salary nationwide for a mathematician in 2020 was $112,530. This was more than the average data scientist. It was around the average for software developer, but it was less than employed physicists, employed economists, and employed actuaries. But this definitely doesn't tell the whole story. A lot of employed mathematicians work in higher education, and higher education definitely doesn't pay as much as, say, the federal government and or big tech companies. In fact, the average base salary for a mathematician working in private industry, and this is before overtime benefits, bonuses, stock options, everything. Just base salary was 121,000, federal government 116, and higher education almost half at around 63,000 as an average base salary. Mathematicians have seen their base salaries rise over time. In 2016, the average base salary was $105,600. By 2020, $112,530. But just definitely keep in mind, higher education is weighing down the average base salary for mathematicians, whereas big tech companies in the federal government are bringing the average up. Next, we're gonna get into the demographics and job market for mathematicians. And I found this so interesting because if you just do a little bit of research into this, you actually see that according to the government, there's only 2,500, around 2,500 employed mathematicians in the US workforce. That just seems really low to me. And I, I feel like they're just, maybe they're counting a lot of mathematicians as software developers, especially the ones that are working in AI and machine learning, or maybe they're counting mathematicians that are working as data scientists or data scientists over mathematician for some reason they really seem to be undercounting the number of employed mathematicians so it really seems like this tiny niche industry that's really you have to live in super specific places in the united states according to the government there's around 2700 employed mathematicians in 2016 by 2020 this shrunk to about 2500 the issue is when you look at job postings at, on different job boards, the numbers just do not make sense. I'll show you right now. On glassdoor.com, when I searched for mathematician, I found around 1,300 job postings. On Indeed, I found 2,500 job postings. And on LinkedIn, I found a staggering 40,466 job postings for mathematicians in the United States. So this looks insane, right? There's about 2,400 employed mathematicians, according to the government, in the United States, and there's 40,000 job postings on LinkedIn for mathematicians. So what this means to me is the government is severely undercounting mathematicians. Maybe they're counting them as software developers, data scientists, physicists, who knows, but for some reason they are undercounting mathematicians and there's probably way more mathematicians in the workforce than the government seems to think. So that covers the labor market for mathematicians. It looks really healthy. There's plenty of job postings for mathematicians right now in the United States. And also keep in mind, majoring in math at, a, at an undergraduate level is one of the least regretted college majors along with computer science. So even if you do end up getting a master's a doctoral degree in math. There's all these other ancillary fields you can go into. Maybe you won't be developing a new algorithm, but if you're working in AI, machine learning, the two really hot fields right now, they really do need people that really understand these algorithms, these theorems. Finally, we can look at the personality of mathematicians. A lot of people don't like the Myers-Briggs personality test, and I understand that. It makes sense to me. The science isn't that great, but a lot of uh, organizations use Myers-Briggs to help people understand themselves. People that are using Myers-Briggs should just be using it to identify their inner preferences. That's it. Like it shouldn't be used for things that it's typically used for in the media. So according to the Myers-Briggs company, there are certain types that are attracted to this particular occupation, mainly the INTP, the thinker, the ENTP, the commander, the INTJ, the mastermind, and the ENTP the debater. Notice that all four of these types have a preference for thinking over feeling. Three of them have a preference for perceiving over judging, and they're all intuitive over sensing. So this kind of shows that maybe having a preference for intuition over sensing as a personality type might give you an advantage as a mathematician. That's mostly how I use MBTI. I try not to go too deep into MBTI because there is flawed science around it. 
most of psychology is a little bit flawed, but I feel like it is useful to help you understand yourself. So I hope this video helped you figure out whether this particular occupation is for you. I have a lot of other content on a lot of other occupations. Feel free to check them out. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.